<clears throat> Hello everyone, and uh, today I'll be repeating uh, Jessica Yang's speech. <clears throat> I mean, the main claim is that the death penalty is counterproductive. <clears throat> Her supporting claims are that the death penalty is not foolproof in <clears throat> uh, executing those who are truly guilty, and the death penalty fails as a, uh, to act as a deterrent to stop crimes, so the death penalty is expensive. And my responses to those claims are that uh, her first claim, the death penalty is not foolproof in executing those who are truly guilty, exhibits logical fallacies, and that the death penalty was not meant to act as a deterrent but as a solution, and that the cost of maintaining the death penalty is minuscule compared to California's overall budget. <coughs> my first response is that um, her claim, her first claim, the death penalty is not foolproof in executing those who are truly guilty is a um, ambiguous fallacy on itself, and it sounds like what she's saying is that the death penalty was used as proof and uh, to execute those um, on death row, and it, it's just confusing, and you don't really know what she's uh, trying to um, <coughs> say. And, um, my sec uh, and uh, my, the secondary claim, uh, uh, the supporting claim on the death row exoneration, um, she brings a point that the, there have been many exo death row exonerations and that, um, but that exhibits a fallacy of presumption because those exonerations uh, are not, um, they don't show the failure of the, are, um, the failure on the death penalty because they have nothing to do with it, it's irrelevant because it shows a failure on the judicial system and has nothing to do with the death penalty itself. And uh, her second supporting claim um, the, that she says about the um, statistic on the amount of people who are set free is just redundant and she's just restating her previous claim. My second um, response is that the death penalty was never meant to be a deterrent as a solution. The death penalty is the highest capital, um, uh, <clears throat> it was the highest capital punishment, and it is supposed to be um, um, used as a punishment for the most heinous crimes. It was never actually meant to be a deterrent, and um, that proved, that shows that uh, her supporting claims of the, uh, the, the murder statistics between the United States and other countries is irrelevant because the death penalty was never meant to be a deterrent. And <coughs> the, her supporting claim on the opinion of criminologists on the de uh, deterrence of the death penalty is a um, is appealing to authority, not fact, which is a fallacy of relevance. And uh, my third claim is that the cost of maintaining a death penalty is minuscule compared to the California's overall budget. A, uh, her um, her claim is that the death row, um, cut, uh, the cost of death row, um, uh, the, the cost to maintain death row is $114 million per year, but according to um, the enacted budget summary of, by the state of California for 2012, um, the budget for uh, 2011 was uh, $94 billion, and uh, $114 million is actually just a, a tiny fraction of what the entire budget is. And she also brings up another point that the cost per execution is two hundred fifty million dollars. However, since, and she states that um, since uh, there have only been thirteen execution, executions since the enactment of uh, the death penalty since nineteen seventy six, um, which is only thirty five, um, which is only three point two five billion in thirty five years, and that is actually a very small amount. And um, well, and finally, what I'm trying to say is that. Um, uh, Jessica um, was um, did not organize her speech well, and um, and uh, she ended up not uh, furthering her point. And um, she, um, thank Is your night.
All right. Well, the uh, advocates' claims labeled, and you mentioned what the secondary issues are going to be. Uh, you kind of preview what your responses to those individual points are going to be. Uh, I wasn't clear what it was that you were saying was a fallacy on the first point. It seems like you're trying to cloud the issue, but I'm not sure that it's really an effective way of answering that point. Uh, the argument about um, exoneration not being relevant to the death penalty, but rather to the judicial process, is kind of okay, although it's a little bit circular because obviously the consequence at the end of the judicial process is the execution. One of the things that I think you ought to be pointing out is that most of the exonerations have occurred as a consequence of that process, and so we uh, give people uh, substantial amounts of appeals. We look at a variety of evidence. Uh, it takes a long time for somebody to be executed, so the chance of somebody actually being innocent executed are relatively small given the protections that are provided in this situation. I think that was, would be a stronger way of going at the argument rather than saying, well, that's really about the procedure rather than the uh, uh, punishment. The deterrence issue, uh, your argument here seems to be the deterrence is not really the um, justification for the death penalty, but you don't give us any evidence that suggests suggest that that's the case, uh, and uh, I'm not sure that you advance your argument very strongly by suggesting that. Even if it's not, then tell us what it is and what factual claims you can make in relation to, to that. There's a value argument here that I think is important, but that value argument is out of place and in, in not appropriate for this particular context. Um, on the cost issue, I thought you were relatively clear when you began by talking about what the total California budget was and how much we're spending for death row currently. And you had a pretty good explanation of that, uh, showing that it's minuscule in the total budget. But after that, the numbers just got confusing. It sounded like you were talking about billions and then millions and then per execution and then total execution. Then it's over 20 years and then it's for the 13 people who've been executed. And I'm not sure what inference you're making there. The last criticism about the organization of the advocates claim, that's, uh, that's something that's uh, about the speech itself, not really about the arguments and the reasons uh, uh, being presented. So I don't know that it gets you anything. All right. Thank you.